Hi, my name is Bill Raymond. Like many of you, I got very excited about artificial intelligence and machine learning at the top of the year in 2023 when ChatGPT and other technologies came out. And I wanted to understand at a deeper level how it works. So as an occasional developer, I started taking some courses, purchasing some books, and learning some of the underlying technologies. And wow, are there a lot of technologies out there. I was overwhelmed by the sheer number of products I needed to install just to learn some of the basics. Now, here's the good news is that once you get them installed, they work pretty well. However, what I learned is as I was taking these courses, every single course required certain versions of certain products in order to work properly. And then I had a whole mishmash of different versions on my computer. It was very hard to manage. And I realized that not only for training purposes, but if I were ever to do this for a job or as part of my role in leading an effort, and I needed to have these tools on my computer, there's got to be a better way. And I want to do that by creating templates. And those templates are going to use Docker. This is the slides only presentation, and I'll put this in a playlist so you can start here and it will continue on with the other videos. However, there are no demos here. Of course, if you know some of the topics or you want to just come back and reference them, I am using chapters so you can use the YouTube scrubber, or of course you can go to the description below and find the links to the chapters there. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is a machine learning environment? Well, I can't necessarily define it specifically for you because maybe you're watching this as a data scientist, a student, a software engineer, or maybe someone that's also like me, just learning. Maybe there is open source projects out there that have an open source data model and you want to try them out on your computer. These are all valid reasons to have a machine learning environment set up. Now, one of the things that these environments will require is that you'll probably want to collect data, analyze data, classify data. And to do that, you're going to use a specific set of tools. And there's many, many more out there. I'm just listing a few of them here. For example, there's Python, which is a common programming language that most machine learning and AI projects use. Of course, you don't have to use Python, but this is the one I'm going to show you. There's TensorFlow, NumPy, and Matplotlib. These are all standard technologies, so you're going to find every machine learning project requires. So that's what I'm going to call a machine learning environment. Now, I already mentioned this earlier in the video, but I think it's worth defining exactly what the problem is that I'm trying to solve. Let's say that you want to install all the software components in order to build a machine learning project. So you go ahead and you put them on your computer. Now, these are software development tools. These aren't little apps that show up on your desktop. They're not something that automatically update anytime there's a new version. They're just going to be there and you have to manage the versions. So what happens when you start doing your software development? Well, it could be that you start installing newer versions because some project you're working on requires a newer or maybe even an older version. Now you have multiple versions of these things on your computer. It's really hard to track and manage what you're trying to do. Now, granted, if you just have one little machine learning project you're doing on your computer and that's it, then this is probably fine. But like I said, I took just a few courses and all, all of a sudden I needed to have all these different versions and some weren't compatible with each other. This is the problem that I'm trying to solve for. So wouldn't it be nice if I could just take all of those tools and not install them on my computer, but create a template, a template that has all of the things that I need in one place, and then take that template and run it in my computer. Now, when I'm working on another project where I have other technologies that I need to work with, maybe I'm, I've just got my little data analysis tool set, I might want another template for that as well. Let's take that a step further. Maybe I want to share one or all of these with a friend, a colleague. Maybe I want to share these with a team or open source community. Or maybe I have a second computer and I want to have the same setup as my other computer. So all of these reasons are valid for why you would want to have a templatized environment set up so that you can work with these machine learning tools. Now to create these templates, there's a number of options. There's more than two, but I'm going to share the two most popular with you. 
One is to use what's called a virtual machine or VM. Now a virtual machine allows you to run a computer using any operating system, Mac, Windows, Linux, and actually put another operating system on it. The way that this virtual machine environment works is it is the entire operating system, the user interface, so you can use your mouse and everything like that. So you can imagine if one of these operating systems is a big memory hog, now you're running your computer that requires memory and CPU, and now also you're running these other virtual machines on there, and they're using more CPU and more of your computer's memory because it's the entire operating system. The second option, and the one I'm proposing, is that you look at Docker containers because they're small and compact, and they only use a portion of the operating system, which is great because what it allows you to do is run the underpinnings of the operating system without the entire user interface. It takes up a lot less memory and CPU, and you can even run a bunch of them at the same time. What does it look like to build one of these templates? Well, first you're going to identify the operating system you have. In my case, I'm going to be doing the entire demonstration on a MacBook Pro using Apple Silicon. That's called ARM. ARM is the chipset that's ultimately driving Apple Silicon. And there's older MacBooks that use Intel. You can use those too. So you can use Windows, Mac, and Linux, all using Intel or ARM. Next, you want to install Docker. Docker comes with what's called the command line interface or CLI and Docker desktop, which is a nice user interface to manage all of your Docker images and containers. So what is an image? An image is essentially your definition for what you're trying to build. And you list all of that out there. When you build that image, you get a container. And that container is something that you can work with and manage. This is where you can write your code, where you can make modifications, maybe even install other software if you need to. The image is the thing that you can distribute. You can create more containers from it, and you can even share that with other people. Now, I want to point something out underneath this container. Notice how it says Linux there. When you create a Docker container, it is most likely that you're going to use some variation of Linux. Why? Because Linux is free. So why can't the container just run on Mac? Because that's what I have installed. As far as I know, Apple stopped supporting any kind of Docker images. And if you want to create your own Windows image, it has to be the same exact version of Windows for your image. So for example, if I created a Windows 8 image and you have Windows 10, they won't work together. So you're gonna to have to manage that. This all comes down to, I think, money and licensing from Apple and Microsoft's part. So anyway, what we're gonna do is run things on Linux. Specifically in my demo, we're going to use a Linux variant called Ubuntu, which is super popular. So maybe you're with me and you say, you know what, I like this idea of packaging up my machine learning environment, but you know what? If I install everything direct on my computer, it's going to be the fastest. And that is absolutely the case. But I just want to point out a few things here. First of all, if you take a look at some typical workloads that you'd be running on a local computer, not on the cloud, not with some collaborative environment, but on your computer, you're probably using subsets of data, assessing that information, analyzing that data, and creating small models to test and validate that what you're doing is accurate. At some point, you're probably going to offload that to either some sort of specific specialized hardware or to the cloud so that you can build larger models. While I just shared why I think templating things with Docker is a great idea, I should share with you why they may not be. And I really want to stress may not be. This is some guidance that I have. This is not hard, cold facts. What you should do is try it yourself and see what you think. Because even as I'm creating this video right now, technologies will change very quickly. Machine learning is, is changing very fast. A lot of systems are getting faster. As a matter of fact, from what I read, although I haven't tested it, it does look like Docker does support working with NVIDIA graphics cards that support CUDA, C-U-D-A, which is a popular image processing capability 
for those that are working with videos and large images. So with that said, I do think that if you are working with videos and large images, you might want to consider sticking to installing directly on your computer instead of Docker, but give it a shot and see what you find. If you're trying to interface with multiple Docker containers, that's more of an advanced topic. So for example, if you have a model here that does one thing and another model here in another Docker container, and you want them to communicate, you want to, you know, do some communication between the two, you might find that to be pretty arduous, especially if you're just beginning. So that's something to consider as well. But again, these are not best practices. I suggest you try it out. Let's talk about the two different methods for accessing the Docker container on your computer. Now, these are not mutually exclusive. You can do one or both of these. The first way is to use an IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And there's lots of those out there. Now, the most popular one is Visual Studio Code. You'll also hear me refer to it as VS Code or VSC. But what this is, is it's a tool that allows you to write the code that you need in order to build and run your models. Now, this is where you're going to write your Python, your Fortran, your C Sharp, your F Sharp, whatever it might be. All of the popular languages are either supported inside Visual Studio Code or they're available as an extension. Now, this extensions thing is really important because what it has is the ability to manage your Docker container right from within Visual Studio Code. It also provides you with the ability to work with your code on your computer. Now, if you've ever seen a video on YouTube that shows how to use Docker, you're going to see that very often you type these commands in a command line interface, and then you copy your code from your local computer and paste it into the Docker container. Now, what happens if you lose that Docker container? All of your code is gone. But you kind of want that code to stay on your computer and then be synchronized with the Docker container. Visual Studio Code provides that capability. And I'm sure there's other technologies out there that do that as well. So I'm not saying they're the only one. I'm just saying this is the one that I'm familiar with. The other nice thing about Visual Studio Code is that it has an integrated CLI. So let's talk a little bit about what a CLI is. A command line interface is where you just type in your commands. Again, if you go and look up articles or YouTube videos on how to use Docker, you'll very often see people typing things like Docker Compose and Docker Build and things like that. This is actually a fast way of working with Docker that does not require you to get familiar with the user interface which is great, right? However, if you're not familiar with using these command line interfaces, it could be a little bit cumbersome. Now, here's the deal. If you are using Docker and machine learning capabilities for large images and videos, the so things that I said you may or may not find to be useful using Docker, then you'll find that Visual Studio Code adds another layer, if you will, of memory that might slow things down. So. What I see a lot of is that people will use Visual Studio Code to do their software development, and then they'll use the command line to do any kind of advanced modeling or testing out their models. If they're really large and take up a lot of memory and CPU, it might be faster to do it that way. But in general, I think Visual Studio Code is the way to go. This is the last slide in the video series, and I just want to walk you through the learning path. The few things that I want you to know are one, I created this as a video series, a playlist with a number of videos. There's 12 in total, primarily because I have heard a lot of people ask me to stop creating one hour, one and a half hour long videos. So I did it this way instead. Give me feedback if you would have preferred it another way. Now, here is what I'm going to walk through. Every one of these videos has a very clear and concise reason for being there. There's an objective for each one. This first video, the one you're watching right now, had an objective of explaining what it is I'm trying to accomplish with this video series. The second video is going to talk about prerequisites, the things that you need to set up on your computer in order to take the rest of this course. The third video contains information about how Docker works. If you have never worked with Docker before, I do not recommend you skipping over this video. In the next video, we're actually going to create a Docker file. This is sort of like the the definition of our template that we're going to be creating. So this is an important one to get you up and running with a Docker file. 
over the video series, you're going to continue adding to that Docker file. Next, of course, I said that we're going to create an AI and machine learning video series. And I said that we're going to use Python as our primary programming language. So we'll make sure that we get Python installed into our Docker container. And you'll learn more about that in this video. We installed Python in the previous video. This one will actually install all of the components that I promised you we would put inside of our AI and machine learning template. Because I know that I'm only giving you instructions for a subset of tools, I'm going to show you how you can go about going and finding other tools that you might find useful in your efforts, and then how to add them to your Docker file. So that's what this video is about, is to kind of walk you through the thought process and actually install one more product by yourself. Just like you would purchase a phone, and that has an app store, and those apps make your phone more useful. Visual Studio Code has an extensions list, and this is from people like Microsoft that created Visual Studio Code, but other people and companies that have other products that are really useful. I am going to help you install four that I think will be, if you will, required for this AI machine learning template, but hopefully that helps you so you can explore and identify other extensions that might be useful to you. I mentioned that I wanna provide a video series that allows you to use the code that I'm sharing with you to create a new AI and machine learning template with or without Git or GitHub. So the first video that I'm pr providing here, this is going to provide you with the steps that you can use in order to just use the template right off of your computer. And then if you feel like getting more advanced and I suggest that you do, you also will use Git and GitHub, and I'll walk you through that process as well. Next, we'll actually create a working machine learning and AI model, a sort of hello world version of one, if you will. And I'll also show you some of the ways that you can build and run your code. And there's a number of ways. You can use notebooks, you can use Jupyter Lab, you can use Visual Studio Code, and there's a number of different ways that you can get your code up and running. So I'm gonna walk you through all of that in this video. Finally, I'll have a very short wrap up video that kind of talks about everything that we did, gives you some tips and tricks. And I'll also ask you there if there's anything more that you would like to see. So with that, I hope you enjoy your journey. Remember, this is a YouTube playlist, so this video should continue playing. If not, look in the description and you'll find a link to the next video there. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more like this, please like, comment, and click the bell to support my channel.